How about this scene? Sure beats the weather that we had this past weekend all across the state of Texas. As we were in the 90s this afternoon here in Austin, perfect setting for some baseball between Rice and Texas. So this is a series that goes all the way back to 1915. Two for four is on. Yeah, but there was a big fly in there. <laughs> it was two for four in that first meeting. Keith actually is not that old. Texas leading the all-time series, 228, 58, and two. In tournament games, the squad's tied at six and six. The last meeting, such a stark difference as well with the weather. It was in the 40s, and right now, right before the first pitch, 88 degrees here at the dish. And with that, welcome to the ATX. I'm Lowell Galindo here with Keith Moreland and Greg Swindell. This is so important. We talked about it ad nauseum with Coach Pierce. Tuesday games, they got to win these, and it's now three straight losses for the Longhorns. Well, you look at it, they're five and four in midweek games this week, guys, this year. They've got six left. You got to take care of business. You're starting to look at, you know, seedings. We're going to be at that point where you're going to start seeing rankings. You're going to see projections into regionals. You got to take care of business on Wednesday. And the way you start that for me is it starts on the mound. And they've got a young man coming back from a tired arm. See what he can do. Yeah, it's been, it's been a struggle. Texas trying to find that midweek guy. And for Texas, that midweek guy is going to be the fourth starter in the postseason. Absolutely. Ty Madden coming back from a dead arm. He's, he's shown some brilliance. He can be dominant at times. But right now, if he can pitch well tonight, that could be that guy you're looking for. And we saw Madden when he is at his best. He can be an upper echelon arm for this Texas rotation. No doubt about it. He's got uh, everything that it comes to. He's got great size. He creates great tilt with his size. And Greg, you know, one of the things you, you push through from high school into college is the amount that you throw. It's different in college than it is in high school. Yeah, I mean, it's more stressful. You see the numbers. He, he has good numbers. It's just been a struggle of being consistent. That's what it's been with a lot of these young arms for Texas this season. First trip back for Matt Braga since we saw him at this stadium for the Super Regionals. He was the head coach at Tennessee Tech. Wayne Graham, contract is not renewed. So where do they go? They go to Tennessee Tech and they bring this man, Matt Bragg, and we know it's, it's just a matter of time before this Rice lineup starts to match. Well, he, he loves to teach hitting offensive baseball and Trey Cruz has just been outstanding. But the other thing about Bragg, I really enjoyed talking to him again today. He's energy. He yeah. creates that energy and that's where he wants his team to play. That's what he said was item number one with reestablishing the culture, putting in his own culture at Rice, it was energy and competitiveness. There is a certain vibe that the Matt Braga teams play with. I mean, you look at what they were able to do at Tennessee Tech, building that program essentially from nothing. They are on the cusp. One win away here in Austin from advancing to the College World Series. Aaron Valorie grounds out to Ryan Reynolds, and it's a quick first out there for Ty Madden. Two, two pitches from Ty Madden, both good angle, good downhill, low in the zone. For Ty Madden, good to see quick outs from Ty Madden. You know, going through the dead arm period with the fastball change up curve, he can be dominant. By saying that, you gotta attack that zone for Ty Madden. Now we saw him dominant March 7th at Stanford. Went seven innings, no runs allowed, five hits, struck out seven, walked three. And then started to have some of those issues just with the tired arm, but he's had some rest. Back on the bump, and this is the fourth start of Ty Madden's career. Brandon Como hitting in the two spot for Rice. And it's a 2-0 count to the junior from Lake Charles, Louisiana. Coach Braga told us that. I thought it was really interesting. You know, they're really having some health problems as a team. He says, I brought 11 position players. That's all I got. Stay healthy, guys. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> stay That's healthy. all I got. It's not ideal. And both squads really battling the oh, injury no bug at this point in time. No, no Eric Kennedy tonight. He's still recuperating from the collision with uh, Duke was, Ellis. And at the, at the time, it was really scary at the time. I really thought Ellis would had a major injury. And, and actually, Kennedy took the worst of the blow. So we will have Tate Shaw in left tonight. His natural position in place of Eric Kennedy. And over at first base, Sam Bertelson who actually struck the ball really well on Friday night. Almost left the yard there in Waco. So Bertelson getting the start at first. And you see Como in frame as Como was able to draw the walk against Madden. And the free passes, that's probably issue number one with this Texas pitching It's staff. an epidemic. 
Yeah, it has been all, all season. And you're going to get that with young arms. And yeah. you, you can say that, well, we're halfway through the season, 35 games into the season. Yeah, young arms, it, it takes a while to get it at this level. Pitch to contact. Yeah, well, that's the key right there. Greg, it, it, sometimes you try to pitch away from making contact with the bat. And you do that, you look up, and you're three and one to everybody. And how about this? Tonight's shortstop from Houston, Trey Cruz. Just like his grandpa back in the day at the Houston Astrodome. Used to get that introduction. But this is crazy because, right, grew up watching Jose Cruz, then saw his son Jose Cruz Jr. coming up through Rice, was the number three overall pick. As that is laced to left field, Shaw is there. And now he has, we have the two sons of Jose Cruz Jr. starting tonight for Rice, Trey Cruz and the DH Antonio Cruz. Pretty good lineage right there. Oh yeah. Grow, you grew up around the game, Jose Cruz Jr. obviously around the game, and these two with their dad playing in the big leagues as well. I was watching Trey take some batting practice, he, every ball he hit just like that. Boy, he does, <laughs> he gets on top of it. He, does a nice job going the other way. And this young man right here, Andrew Dunlap, uh, he can hit a little bit as well. Ball, ball jumps off his bat. Top 20 in the NCAA and RBI, home runs, and also hit by pitch. So he will wear it if that's what it takes to get on. There's Michael McCann, he's able to get the block. Most of the time you see on the scoreboard, he's got number 41 wearing number 29 tonight. So you think he forgot his jersey? That's, that's usually what happens. You don't just randomly switch numbers. No. I mean, he, if he goes 4-4 four for four tonight, he might change to number 29. No. <laughs> no you, you got one. That's yours. Swing and a miss from Dunlap. This is a power hitting team for Rice Owls. And not a big, uh, and Reckling Park is not a great home run park. It takes, you got to hit it pretty well to get it out of there. Ten home runs in the last seven games for Rice. They don't move around on the bases a lot. From day one, they have stress, extra base hits. You come to Rice now, you're looking for doubles, looking for home runs. Up the middle, good glove work by Ty Madden. And just one walk, but Rice is not able to get anything over. Time for the Texas bats when we return. David Pierce, longtime assistant coach under Wayne Graham at Rice. His head coaching career against the Owls, eight and four. When number eight came earlier this season against Rice. Here's the lineup for Texas and Lance Ford now surprisingly. At 280 of tonight's starters, he's the leading hitter. Yeah, Zeke and I were talking before the game. Zeke, and you said that exactly. I think Lance Ford figures out, has figured out, hey, I, I'm gonna be here and that it's my job. And yeah. I'm just gonna relax and go play. And all of a sudden, He's become one of the better offensive players, taking good, solid at bats. He's been good defensively all along, but using the whole field and starting to drive the baseball. Yeah, you start to get comfortable at your position. You start to see the average go up. You play better, play loose. I'm gonna try to play loose tonight against Kel Boardwine. See the sophomore out of Cypress, Texas. Making a sixth start of the season. Not many walks, gives up a good amount of base hits, 32 in those 24 plus innings for Kel Boardwell. So Duke Ellis will lead off with the Longhorns. Look at his splits. And he's usually squared up balls like that on the road, drifting back to left where it's blowing out. It's down, past the reach of Dunlap. Ellis on his horse and into third with the leadoff. Stand up, triple. What I was gonna say is on the road, Hitting 348 at home, 197. We don't see rips like that. Just went up. <laughs> what he's been able to do is right here. Look at this extension. The ball away from him, Greg, when he can get his arms extended, he gets really good carry on. We've seen his home runs down to left field, it's, both of them. You know, at times he gets tied up inside and he doesn't get extended, but gets good extension there and a great start for the ball game. Second triple of the season for Duke Kellis. That will bring up Lance Ford. And it was an aggressive early approach, especially Friday night against the Baylor pitching. Texas was able to get up with four quick runs. Heard from Coach Pierce mid-game and really liked the aggressiveness that his guys showed at the plate. It has to be loving the production he's getting right now from Lance Ford. For the most part, that first fastball is going to be the best one you'll see. Yes. 
Ford drove in four on Saturday. And the Texas comeback win. So Texas dropped the opener in Waco. The game they had an early 4-0 lead. Baylor was able to come quickly back. A rare one-run loss for David Pierce and this Texas team. It was the counter to that on Saturday where Texas trailed early, but was able to come back and get the win. Jumped out to a quick start in Sunday's game, and then the skies opened up. And that game was canceled. This is what we were, we were talking about before we came on here. This is one of the grittiest teams no we've doubt. seen in Austin in a long time. And here's a recap of that series. Downey with the walk-off hit to get the win for Baylor. So they dropped down a bunt to start off the ninth as Texas was playing the shift. Had a couple of walks by Cole Quintanilla that did not help the cause as Ford goes down on strikes. Uh, but yeah, you talked about excellent play. Richard Cunningham with the, with the shift and two strikes puts down an unbelievable bunt. But that that didn't beat Texas in the in the ball game. It was the, the two walks yeah. that load the bases with nobody out. And again, goes back and to the story of the year. Austin Todd left the yard in Waco, had a shot to left field that got out in a hurry. And that one is wide from Boardwine. See if Texas can be productive here with the runner on third, less than two outs. Such a key aspect to any offensive approach, cashing in in these situations. Outside ball two. But you guys were getting into the resiliency of this team. Yeah. They have flaws. I mean, that's pretty evident, but somehow they are finding ways to win. And I think you look at their number in one run game, seeing nine and three. That sums it up right there about this Texas team. Rip to left field. It's got the distance, just not straight enough. That's a good 2 0 -oh hack right there. Yeah, don't <laughs> hit it. On, if you hit it anywhere, hit it on the end of the bat as you're trying to get the yeah. barrel up well out in front. No doubt about it. Yeah, it, well, I think you can take that a step. Just what you were just saying right there, a step further. That's that's the hallmark of this club you, you just look at it it's a club that they can be down four nothing early in the ball game and they're going to keep grinding and so many clubs swing over the top of that one so many clubs though you get down four or five runs you see guys just okay it's over but honestly to counter that they can also get up by five runs well that's pitch and, yeah the I minute mean, that's young arms yeah but even when they have allowed teams back in the game. It has not ended the chances for the Longhorns, as that is another great piece of hitting with two strikes for Austin Todd. Duke Keller scores, Texas is on the board. Now they had the ship on for Todd, but able to beat it just because Cruz was playing so far over in the hole at shortstop, he couldn't get there. Good piece of hitting, though, to, to stay with it, put it in play with the infield back. And I haven't seen much of a shift on Austin Todd. All we year. haven't. Look at these second baseman's up the middle. Shortstop way over in the hole. Would have scored the run anyway, but Austin Todd gets a base hit out of it. Hitting 422 with runners in scoring position. And Rice, you see they have struggled in this scenario. 1-17 in 17 when opponents score first. Ryan Reynolds. Excellent defensively in the hot corner. It's had a solid offensive season. Still wearing that Evo shield with the Omaha band as the players receive those. In the College World Series appearance. And that is a well-timed double play for Kel Boardwine, but the Longhorns get one. Ellis starts it off with a triple. Todd drives him in, and it's one nothing. In this baseball on Longhorn Network is brought to you by Coors Light, official sponsor of the Texas Longhorns. It's talk about David Pierce and his ascension to becoming a head coach at the University of Texas. And he is not in a position like this unless it is for the opportunity he had to learn under Wayne Graham, one of the greatest of all time Pierce was there with Graham for nine seasons as an assistant coach. 
Oh, right back to Madden as it was rifled off the bat of Knighting. And he's holding his left hand. Out of the glove. That's one thing as a pitcher, you're not ready for that one that comes right back at you that quick. He's favoring his thumb on the left hand. He had the wherewithal, though, out, out of this to get an out. Glove just popped off. It got right where the glove and the hand meet. Close to the wrist. Mm. I think it, that's just... Can't do anything about that. It found him. Yep. I mean, he did put his glove up. It's a reaction for a pitcher. More of a protection more than anything. And obviously, there are times when you're just reacting. That's, just all, that's all it is. That's all it is right there when it's hit that hard. You're, it's more of a defense mode than anything. You see, it, the only thing you see is a ball coming at you probably harder than you threw it. Does it take and you a little it, while to settle down? velocity guarantee was harder well, than you threw it. It takes you a few pitches, yes, but it also makes you concentrate more. Don't throw them right down the middle as much. <laughs> Let me get on that end of that bat, or let me get on the hand. This is Kate Edwards, fell a couple off to the right side. Edwards played for David Pierce in 2016 at Tulane, appearing in 23 games. Tulane, the stop for Pierce immediately before taking the job here at Texas. Got his start as a head coach at Sam Houston State. Following his successful run at Rice, where he helped the Owls make four trips to Omaha and win the 2003 NCAA championship. He remains tight with Wayne Graham. Considers him one of his best friends. I believe they might get somebody going in that bullpen. You can see the way the ball, when Michael McCann throws it back to Ty, it's, it, it's not feeling very well. Yeah, Mateo Boki is taking a jog to get loose. This ball is floated. Reynolds tried to barehand it at the awkward angle, cannot grab it. And Edwards will stay alive. So where do you see it right now, Zeke? When, he, when they throw the ball back to Ty. Oh, good effort right here from Ryan. Keith Mitchell. Did, doesn't have the good angle right there. <laughs> the bare head. Yeah. Mason looks up into the sun from where he's coming from. But when they're throwing the ball back to Ty, he, he's catching it with two hands. Tough for him to, to close the glove. Hot shot, just foul. Tate Shaw thinks it's fair. Well, that's what you <laughs> do. He's going your, to get it. Do your job. Yes. And you got to think that Shaw feels a lot more comfortable out and left where he has made some amazing plays as opposed to first base where he really was thrown into the fire. The trust factor. They knew they could put him over there and he could adjust. But that's his natural spot out there. That's right off the hands of Edwards. I mean, you're talking about one of the premier defensive corner outfielders. It's a team player. I mean, he, he wants to be in the lineup, hit his way into the lineup. Wasn't playing at the beginning of the season very much. It's production. Look hit at his, his way into the lineup and played, played some solid first base. Time Madden fired up right there with, with that reaction. I don't think he appreciated that bullpen going down there. <laughs> Says, I got this, coach. As Edwards goes down looking for a strikeout of the evening for Ty Madden. So that's one thing, though, for, for a position player, you can go in, tape it up. For a pitcher, you can't put any tape on that hand. No white tape. This is Rodrigo DeLuke, and he loses his bat. Thank goodness for the netting. Let's get a little pong talk. That's some good distance on him right there. <laughs> right above the entrance to the dugout. And he's hearing about it. See some of the Rice fans there coming in their coming in their mouth. What just happened? Are we going with a new batting glove? It had to be the batting glove, right? Oh, 
He likes to go bottom blue, white top. Hope there's some stick -em on it. 0 oh, 2 to Deluke. Stayed in his hand that time. And Ty Madden, I saw your best. He got a shot off on me. I came back strong after getting hit by Bradley Knighty. Welcome back to UFCU Dish Fog Field, bottom of the second inning. Texas got out to the quick 1-0 lead. Great evening to take in a game here. This is probably the best evening that we've had for a baseball game so far this Chamber year. Chamber of Commerce Day yep. and an evening as well. well. I think we're looking at it like just like 10 days ago, we were in Parkas. Yes. And all of a sudden, bam, it's 90 degrees. It's going to get cooler again this wait, weekend. Though. Wait five wait minutes. Wait five minutes. It's, <laughs> it's Texas. <laughs> it might change during the game. You never know. I don't think tonight. So Tate Shaw is stepping into the batter's box according though to our lineup yep. and to the lineup on the board. It should be Mason Hibbler. That's what it says. I think Sean yeah. Allen ran by and said something to the coaching staff for Rice. But they need to let the umpire know, right? So we're going to go with Shaw in the five hole, Hibbler in the six hole. Mason is on deck. That one dies right in front of Edwards, and he cannot handle it. Five hole. You're stuck. on board. You're stuck so much in the middle right there. He was going to come get it in the air. He would have been much better off once he stopped to start backing up a little bit because it's a scoop bounce instead of a big hop that he thought he was going to get. Miscue. It was interesting. Spraga talked about the fact is they had eight miscues early in the season, and it's got their year-long uh, team fielding percentage in the 950s. The night after Texas played yeah. against the University of Arizona. <laughs> So they are last in fielding percentage in Conference USA, but in conference play, they're leading. They're the number conference. one. Yeah. Remember a few years ago when Rice was here, they played at Twilight, spent so much time working on picking up the baseball. That was an opening. Yeah, weekend. opening series, yeah. And they came out, sure enough, had so much trouble with picking up the baseball on the right side. And that's kind of sums up Tate Shaw though. Like the guy finds a way to get on base. On base right? he, he just does it. It's according, Mason according to our lineup, we weren't supposed to be up. <laughs> Hibbler was this week's team most valuable defensive player, offensive player, and team MVP. That's the internal awards. As he lifts this one to the right side, DeLuke is under it. And Shaw will go back. So Hibbler, we talked a lot about the struggles at the beginning of the year. Now it seems like he's gotten over that hump and has settled in nicely. Yeah, it was good to see him have some positive things happen on the road, too. He had been really struggling away from UFCU Dish Park Field all season. Got that going over the weekend up in Waco. First home run of the season. Got one taken away Sunday, too, didn't he? Knocking a rib. Yeah. That game, just wipe it out of your memory. Never happened. Got two in. And the only person that likes that was the starting pitcher for Baylor. Zach Zubia got a little bit of a break this weekend. He has struggled at the plate. But if Zubia can find it, we all know the kind of damage that he can do. Three home runs, 18 RBI, the batting average, not where he wants it to be. But more than that, I think the Texas staff can live with a lower average from Zubia. It's that slugging percentage. This one is going to get down in front of DeLuke. On his way to third will be Shaw, and there's first and third, one out for the Longhorns. That's base running. Right there by Tate Shaw. 
He recognizes that ball's going to drop. It's off at the end of the bat. He's taking a chance right there that they're not going to catch that ball. Being aggressive and getting to third base. If they catch it, all right, you doubled up. You see Tate, he recognizes right there. That ball's dropping. He never hesitated. Texas had some bad base running on Friday night that may have cost them a win. Well, the first two innings, they ran into outs in both innings. One of them was a double play. Yeah. Sam Bertelson ripped a ball on Friday night, only to see it snared by the Baylor center fielder. And a defensive play, in my mind, that's not getting enough credit for how good it truly was. Full speed, right at the base of the wall, awkward angle to wipe out extra bases for Bertelson. Richard Cunningham's the best center fielder, maybe. <laughs> One of the best in America. Bertelson fouls it back. It will be 1-1. One, one. Ooh, not on the head. He's not going to feel very good. Unfortunately, the woman that was hit on the head is going to need to be attended to. Mm. Ripped hot shot, great defensive play at first base by Knighting. For the double play to end it, runners on the corner with one out, and Knighting comes off with a double play. Logan Lindo here with Keith Moreland and Greg Swindell. Texas really had something cooking there with runners on first and third, but a fantastic defensive play by Rice gets them out of that jam. We go to the top of the third. The Owls hitless through the first two. Now, this is a team that, that needs to score. Rice, 2 and 15 this season when scoring fewer than six runs. So it is a team that is fueled by their offense. The higher scoring the game, the better shot they have to win. Grant Frazier is leading off against Ty Madden. Madden had a really nice bounce back. We saw him take a shot off the bat of Knighting. Right on his glove hand, his glove popped off. Got some activity going up briefly in the Texas bullpen, but he recovered to get a couple of strikeouts in a row, get out of the inning. Backhand for Hibbler, collects and fires, one down. Excellent footwork that time by Hibbler, going to his right. Young players, young infielders especially, once you go to that backhand, you got to get yourself. You saw him get himself up, get his feet under him where he can plant, make the throw across the diamond. It's the most important thing when you do have time to set those feet. Yep. Here's Antonio Cruz, another one of the sons of Jose Cruz Jr. Playing at Rice, like their pops. Where's the mascot? Would have hit him if he was there. Sammy or Bebo? No, no, I was thinking about the owl. Sammy the owl. He's tying him up with that fastball tonight. No pun intended. Brandon Ivy headed to the bullpen. That was a good pun, though, if it was intentional. You thought you had that one, Zeke. I was on it. Looking for a souvenir there. A 2 2 count. Madden looking for the third strikeout, and that one's fouled off crew. Two, two. And down on strikes is Antonio Cruz. Three strikeouts now for Ty Madden. Looking good. Yeah, I told you, it might take a few pitches to get that soreness out of your mind. And now you're concentrating a little more. He got three out of the four hitters since the glove came off. He struck out. Brings up the top of the lineup in Bo Laurier. 
There's two ways you can go with it. One, one, oh, my hand hurts. I'm sure. not going to be out, or you can toughen up and make better pitches. Ty's gone that direction. Well hit up the middle, Hibbler cannot get there. And that is the first hit of the evening by the Rice Owls. Well, Greg, I go back to Wally Pipp. <laughs> you know, if you come out of the game, you may not get a chance to get back in it. Right. I mean, right now, it's, it's about getting the ball over the plate, getting hitters out in this role. The Tuesday job. Yep. It's midweek. It, it's open. Yes. Randy Como walked his first time up. First pitch strike by Madden. Madden and Kel Boardwine, pitcher for Rice, former teammates at Cy Ranch High School. They're going head to head. See so what Cy Ranch has a couple good ones there this year. That gets away from the can. And they've had Boardwine and Madden over the last three years. They've <laughs> put some pitchers out. Yes, they are. So if you're out recruiting, make sure you stop by Cy Ranch. Well, they've already committed, those two. I'm sure there's more in the pot. Oh, yeah. line. The wild pitch advances Bellorier to scoring position. Como will not chase, and it's 2-1. But not a bad pitch. That, that's in a location where it could have been called a strike. Oh, that was a good pitch. <laughs> two two. Trying to paint, Madden thought he had done it like Bob Ross. Instead, full count. Yeah, I don't blame him. That was another. That was even. That was a better pitch than the one previously called the ball. This one right here, just on the outside half. Maybe, maybe a little much outside. Keep hitting that spot. You'll get it pretty well too. Popped up right side. Austin Todd coming on hard. It's going to drop. And Bolorier will score, and it's tied up at one. Well, you just go back to the, the whole scenario. It's just the ball gets away, get into scoring position. Then all of a sudden, you don't get the call 2 2. You have to come back 3 2 with a pitch. Just makes contact. He falls in front, and all of a sudden, you got a tie ball game. All happening with two outs and nobody on. Back to the wild pitch. He's on first if the wild pitch isn't there. And probably sitting on third. But we got a tie game. And you got a really good hitter at the plate right here, too. Cruz has hit nine straight. 294, six home runs, 28 driven in. Got some wheels, too. Four triples. Second most in Conference USA. And you got to love the stirrup look. Well, it runs in the family right there. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, stirrups and high socks. Kind of kind of looks like his grandpa in the box yeah, right there. It does. Hands are up. Mm -hmm. His grandpa is a Houston legend. One of the most beloved members of the Houston Astros franchise history. He's got the green light now. Yeah, he does. Looking for something to drive. Try to get Rice the lead. That's one. They could do it as Ellis is going back to the track and makes the catch at the base of the wall. But man, Trey Cruz 
flexed for that one. We're going to talk to Cruz's head coach, Matt Braga, when we return right here on Longhorn Network. Welcome back to UFCU Dish Funk Field. The Rice Owls have just tied it at one as we go to the bottom of the third. It's time to catch up with the head coach of the Owls, Matt Braga. It seems like it was just yesterday we saw you here with Tennessee Tech, but now you've got that old English R <laughs> on the cap. I mean, do you pinch yourself from time to time like you're the head coach of Rice now? Oh, it's awesome. Yeah, it, it's awesome. And you know, I, I look back and I just think uh, marvelous times at Tennessee Tech, incredible young men there and administration that gave me the opportunity to be Division One head baseball coach and even to put uh, put myself and my family in the situation to be, you know, the head of a program like Rice. That's an exciting time for you. I know an exciting player, your shortstop coach. Trey Cruz has hit two on the money, one as far as they can go in, in this ballpark. What's it like having that kid out there? Oh, man, today? Trey's special players, as, as you guys can know and can tell. And, you know, great young man to be around, always energetic, always working, incre incredibly talented young man. So, But he does not take that for granted. He works and works and works. And because of that, he's got a chance to play baseball, going to have a chance to play baseball for a long time. Well, you talk about energetic, tough not to love your energy, Coach. We appreciate it I'll and always bringing it. And thank you so much, guys. You have a great night. You too. Thanks. Braga did a heck of a job building Tennessee Tech to a program that went to Oxford, beat Old Miss to win the Oxford Regional. When it looked like Texas was going to have to go to SEC country and play the Rebels on the road, you see Tennessee Tech get that win, so they come to Austin for the Super Regionals and a team that was the best offensive team in America, leading the nation in home runs, runs scored. Every number to back up offensive greatness, that is what Tennessee Tech had, won the first game and fell just short of making it to Omaha for the first time. Jackson Tyner, now the new pitcher for Matt Braga. Fastball slider. Lefty, lefties, I know McCann's a right. Lefty's only batting 111 off him this See that cut right there? That, yes. That's, that was nasty. He's in the game now for Kel Boardwine. He went the first two, gave up three hits, one earned run, but was helped out by a couple of big ending inning double plays. And we'll get into Braga and his offense in depth, but we also learned from that Tennessee Tech program, Braga's going to be able to develop some arms as well. I mean, Ethan Roberts was, was one of the most explosive players that we saw on the mound in the postseason. That's chop foul off the bat of McCann. They used him in such an interesting way, too. He, he was a guy that would come in to close the game out in the fifth. Yeah. I mean. And remember, he wanted to keep going in one of the pivotal games. Yep. But coach came out to pull him because of his future. High draft pick, wanted to keep that arm alive as McCann has the leadoff single to center field. So the numbers were just absolutely mind-blowing what Tennessee Tech was able to do offensively, and it was one through nine. Everybody in Braga's lineup could leave the yard. 332, 9.8 runs per game, 135 home runs. Now, to put that in perspective, they became just the second team in the BB Core era. It's 2011 and on to hit more than 100 home runs in the season, and they hit 135. But then they fell into the lower of Dish Fog Field. Yeah. Um, and some pretty good pitching in that super regional. Ellis with the bunt. It's going to be hard for the second baseman to cover, but Edwards makes it just in the nick of time to record the out. Does his job though, McCann moves up to second. That was That's close. a good play all the way around though, defensively. Finding a way to get an out right here. It's a perfect bunt. Catch it, get on the bag in time to get the out right there. That wasn't easy. No, no sir. Well, the ball's in the air, so you got, you got to keep your eye on the ball and kind of have the wherewithal to know where the, where the bag, bag is. is. Kind of handcuffed him too a little bit. Lance Ford is really starting to come on. Maybe he's feeling a little bit comfortable. Just a freshman. He's thrown into the fire early with some of the injuries that Texas had in the middle infield. They had to move some pieces around. And that is 
is ripped to center field past Edwards. McCann is being waved home. McCann will score. Longhorns take the lead back. And Ford was almost caught up, just like Texas had issues Friday night against Baylor, but he's able to get back in time. Well, able to fight it off, got in on him just a little bit about the label of the bat, just muscled this ball into center field. But both times on the, the, the infielders have been shifted over. Look, the second baseman's already seen right there in the picture. Normally playing right where yep. that ball was hit. Almost like McCann's ball, too, wasn't hit that far up the middle and got the center for a base hit. All he does is drive in runs. Lance Ford, now five RBI in a two game span. And still plenty of time here on this gorgeous Tuesday night in Austin. You know, Keith, some guys show up and they grab your attention because they play with so much flash. And then there's a guy like Ford, who it's hard to notice him because he doesn't do a lot. He doesn't carry himself as a flashy guy. So you have to watch him play more to appreciate what he means to this team. Well, he's doing his job. I mean, I, I really think that when you're young and you're a freshman and you come in so many times, uh, uh, do you? Do I belong here? Can I play here? You have all these doubts and all that comes through your head. But I think Greg said it best, and we were talking about it earlier today, when, Zeke, when you talked about it, he, he knows now he's in there. It, it, that's a comforting, makes you comfortable. More comfortable. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's not a guarantee. I mean, he can still get his job taken, but when you're comfortable, you play loose. When you play loose, you, you obviously, what Lance Ford's doing over the last 10 games right there. David Pierce really believes in allowing guys to win jobs and keep those jobs. As Ford is off, the throw down in time, and he gets four. But really believes in allowing guys to feel secure in their spot, that it's not going to be taken away if they had a bad series or they get caught stealing second base. We missed something here. Uh, I, you know, I think 3-1, you put the guy in motion expecting your hitter to swing at a 3-1 right. pitch. It's a strike, and Austin Todd didn't swing. Just took it right there. Weak up the middle. Edwards makes the play and does so in time. The lands forward, delivers, drives it in McCann, gives Texas the lead back 2-1. You hear the word surreal, um, humbling. Uh, those words come to mind because it is. You, you play, you play sports because you love it, and then all of a sudden you, you're in a, a Hall of Fame, uh, the biggest state in the nation, the best state in the nation. And to be able to have my name instilled in it and enshrined in it, um, I, I couldn't have asked for any more. To, to be from here and now. We're in the top landing room. <laughs> it's going to be the long horn. It's just great. Can't say it enough. So well deserved that Greg Swindell is in the Texas Sports Hall of Fame. What does that honor <laughs> mean to you? Everything. I mean, like, like I said there, you don't play the game for those reasons. You play the game because you love it. I was on a lot of great teams, had a lot of great coaches growing up. And, and that's what you, that's the, I get to reap from all the great coaching and teammates and playing at this university. It, it was just, um, it was a dream come true here to play in the major leagues. And then um, last week was, was really cool. It was cool, man. It was. Congrats, Paul. Thank you. I saw you choke up. What was it about the emotions? What did it for you? Well, friends, family, teammates. I mean, everybody's there. And it didn't really hit me till I walked into the, sure. the Hall of Fame and wake up. I'd been there before and, and seen the things, but now I got, I got a case right there. I'm like, whoa. <laughs> this is this is awesome. It, it, I'm, got Jason Witten sitting over here, and Nancy Lieberman through my right. I'm just like, I'm going into a Hall of Fame with these people. And all the speeches were great. Of course, I cried during my speech. I'm a crier, but it was neat because, like I said, my daughters were there, wife, sure, friends, high school coach Clint Thomas showed up, my pitching coach here at Texas. So it was neat. Reynolds on the run, no doubter for him. I mean, you're. Jersey's up here. 
number will always be here at UMCU Dishfuck Field. I remember growing up, opening packs of baseball cards, and you'd get the Greg Swindell, and that always meant something as a kid growing up in the state of Texas because we wanted to be like you. <laughs> I'm serious. You were the guy that were one of the most dominant pitchers in college baseball history, but you were the guy at Texas. And little kids across the state in that era, they felt a connection with them. And that's what you like to hear, too. I mean, we caught talking to Coach Braga. He grew up in Ashtabula, Ohio. Yeah. I used to watch you growing up. I mean, that that's what you love to hear, people that, that appreciated what you did. And, and so we, we did it because we loved it. And, I mean, we'd love to go do it again. Exactly. Yeah, it was. It's it's fun to hear stories like that. I mean, for one, you, you've paid your dues. You're in. You're 54 now. I'm a grandfather, and to hear people talk about, yeah, I I, I pretended I was you in the yard playing wiffle ball. It's like, all right. And now because I did the same thing. What 54? Hell, he was in that game in 1915. You, you were. Would you get the win against Rice? I might have came in and got the save. <laughs> <Exactly. Okay. laughs> and now we've got a three-year-old grandson. Just embarking yes. on his baseball the career. Phillies, how about that? Yeah, my, my daughter. I mean, come on, three years old. And he won. Hey, Papa, can you can you coach? I said, I'll show up if I can, but <laughs> I don't know if I can coach three year olds. I have a hard time running around the house trying to catch them, much less a bunch of them. Yeah, the attention span is probably not quite there. Yeah, he said he, my wife sent me the picture of him, at Phillies little Philly emblem and. So, yeah, he's, he's so stinking cute, but he only lasted <laughs> 10 minutes. Understandable. Madden and Bertelson can't get to it. And Knighty is on safely. So we talk about attention span. And you obviously had to have one. And one of your more prolific starts here at the University of Texas against Rice. Well, Going nearly 13 innings. I think I was so tired from the by the end of the game that it just seemed like I did I had an attention span 12 and 12 and two-thirds innings hooked up against Norm Charlton in Houston he went nine I go in, I'll go out into the 13th inning I got first and second one out absolute missile by Edwards Knighty looking for third he will hold up and it's runners at second and third one out for Rice as Texas Every time they've answered, Rice has come right back. Elevate. Get the ball up. You pay a price. You can see his hands. He can get on top of it right there. Really good swing. Just about the above the belt. Inside. Turn on it. All of a sudden, now second and third. And activity in the Texas bullpen. Double barrel activity. So how many pitches do you think you threw? Tristan Stevens. On the left, Mateo Boki's up, but he looks like he might sit down. How many pitches? Well, I would think 12 and two thirds. I, I threw at least 165, easily. Yeah, and it was hot. But, um, but we had first and second, one out. I got a chance on getting out of this end, two game, two to two. And um, ground ball hit the hit the short, tried to turn two and threw it away at first, and the winning run scored. 12 and two thirds. Nice. Yeah, it was a it was quite a quite a game. So coach Pierce is not messing around. He's going to go out and make a change. As Ty Madden has looked pretty strong. So I'll take a liner off his glove side. Glove popped off. He's able to recover, make a play at first. And struck out the next two batters. Three and a third, four hits. Three strikeouts, one walk. And the one run that scored, really the wild pitch was a factor, but it's not like the ball was a rifle coming off the bat of Coma. It was placed in the exact right spot. Kind of a blooper down the right field line. Place good. The the play that right the, with one out in this inning, just a dribbler to yeah. first base. Yeah. And you get on base. He, he hasn't thrown the ball well, elevated it right there, and they hit the ball good. And Coach Pierce has seen enough, so he's gonna go to the bullpen and bring in Tristan Stevens. David Pierce makes a call to the bullpen and Tristan Stevens will enter. Stevens 6'2", 205, sophomore 
out of Springfield, Missouri. Coming in 14th appearance of the season for Tristan. Pitched an inning over the weekend against the Baylor Bears. Got a hit and struck out one. He's had 11 inherited runners. Four have scored, but two important ones out there right now. Yeah, and those 10 walks, and you look at those numbers, that all happened early. He's really, his command has gotten, his last five appearances have been, has been much better. He's got, got good sink, has a good slider, keeps the ball down for the most part. So the Owls with runners on second and third, Knighting on third, Edwards on second, with one out. And Rodrigo DeLuke will try to drive him in. He struck out his first time up. Shows bunt, and it's foul. Safety squeeze right there. Sure was. It's a good offensive night here. Ball's carrying pretty well. Breeze not as strong as it was earlier, but I'm not sure that one or two. I think you're going to need to score six or eight tonight oh, yeah. to come away with a victory. Just to go back to that stat we had earlier. Rice 2 and 15 when scoring fewer than six. So it's in their DNA now under Matt Braga that they need to score in bunches to win games. 0 1. That's low and away. Makes it one ball, one strike to the number seven hitter. Frazier and Antonio Cruz do up. Knighting had a dribbler that went between Madden and Bertelson. Edwards with a rocket for a double to put the Owls where they stand right now. As a hitter, Greg, you hear me talking about it. slugging percentage and on base percentage are the two that I really look at to see how a hitter's really doing. What is it for a pitcher? Is it batting average, whip? What is? Do you have a couple things you look at where you can see a pitcher starting to turn the corner? Uh, I can start seeing it when uh, both of the slugging and on base go up for a hitter. Against the pitcher. Against, like, you know, for, for a hitter, if I'd say, hey, this guy's starting to turn. Lance Ford right now, you can see his slugging going up, right. his on base going up. So you're seeing, hey, this guy's starting to find it. Now, on the other side, for a pitcher, what are the two indicators for you? Is it hit base runners per inning? What do, what do you look at? Quality strikes. And for Texas, it has been. Now, the bullpen is quality strikes. And that's something that Tristan Stevens has given you the last five or six hours. Big strike out there. Duluth down, swinging. Twice on the breaking ball. going to bring up Brent Frazier. Rounded out to Hibbler. Back in the third inning. And he looks at strike one. And for a lot for this Texas bullpen as of late, they come in, they do well the first inning. Can they repeat it after that? Good point. Frazier hitting close to 100 over his last 17 games. As we know, it just takes one. We'll try to find it here. 1-1. One, one. McCann's having to work. He's keeping it in front. That is the lone man standing essentially in the catcher spot with DJ Petrinsky out for the season. Kasten Peter out for a couple more weeks. Foul tip, and now Stevens is one pitch away from leaving runners at second and third. Texas was able to get Turner Kent back on the roster, so they do have a catcher. A backup catcher, not a backup position fielder as a catcher. A rare waiver granted yes. by the NCAA to get Gant back on the roster. 2 2 from Tristan Stevens. And there it is. Stevens showing absolutely zero emotion as he gets out of that jam with back to back strikeouts. We'll talk to David Pierce about what he saw from Tristan Stevens right there. Hey, help. Awesome night for baseball here at the Dish, and Texas with the 2-1 lead going to the bottom of the fourth inning. 
Now time to chat with the head coach of the Longhorns, David Pierce. So Coach Lance Ford is one of those guys, we talked about him being an unassuming player until you watch his body of work. What's allowed him to be a factor for your team? Well, he's got a quality swing. I mean, the kid has uh, the, the great ability to stay inside the ball. Uh, he handles all pitches, and he's just a baseball player. And, and I think you're starting to see that as he settles in as a freshman. And, and Coach, one of the things now, this is about five or six times you've gone to Tristan, and That's he's coming doing. And he's finding he's finding that role. That's exactly what I was going to go to. You finding a role to sort of fit in to help in your ball club. Yeah, I mean that's outstanding work right there. And now he's out because that's his job right there. Coach, see you tomorrow for game plan. All right, sounds great. See you guys. So David Pierce will be in studio tomorrow for game plan with David Pierce. I guess Mateo Boki's coming into the game. <laughs> Special guest will be Tater. The Tater. Yes. Said he was nervous, a little nervous earlier. Drake Greenwood now. See the big right hander right there, making his tenth appearance. Walks have hurt him in the 16 innings, 12 walks. And base runners have hurt him 10 for 10 and stolen bases off of him this year. Tells me he's not real quick to the play. <laughs> Reynolds is trying to line up one again that doesn't go right to a defender. He's had a great opportunity. Laced the ball down the line, but right into the mid of nighting. Turned a double play, 3-6-3, three, three, and that's popped up. Como coming back towards the line and makes the grab. It's one out. It's interesting it, 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 when coaches find a spot for you and what you've done well they'll start putting you in that spot and then get you out of deal like you said coach Pierce said right there he's gonna get Stevens into the game we needed him to come in and get that exactly done well he got it shut the door now gonna get him out of the game and that's what you want to know as a, as a player as a pitcher I know now I'm, I'm gonna be the guy to come in in the inning to get out of it Right, so I need to be ready and have my best stuff when I come in this ball game because this is all I got. So Greenwood hits Tate Shaw. Bragg is going to come out, and we're going to see this throughout the course of the year. Anytime anybody is hit, there is going to be some sort of discussion. Well, it's a reviewable play because it's a reviewable play. They can see if if, if anybody leaned into it. Did they put you know put an elbow or a knee or they do anything? They can just stand still. Well, first it didn't even hit them. That's probably that might be what they're asking. Yeah, that might be what he asked. Can we can we take a look at it? See if it hit him? Yeah, it's a it's a reviewable play. Yeah. Right behind that foot. And of course, Shaw's gonna take first base if they give him the opportunity. That's part of part of the acting part of it right there. Take, yeah, he's gonna take his base and again would be one of those times where even when he doesn't get hit, he's still on base. Yeah. For the time being. So on reach on an error, first time up. That's what they were asking. Did he even hit him? That's that's inconclusive right there. Couldn't tell. Tate played it off pretty good. Unless it just nicked his toe. Like right there, it looks like it might have nicked the toe. Right there. Ah. Uh, huh? But you think if it hit the toe, it might have caromed a different direction. That one there looks like it went behind the foot. <laughs> yep. Yeah, and close. I think there would be. How oh, they're gonna give him first? Keep him there. I know. And it goes back to the indisputable. It's it's just not enough evidence to overturn. <laughs> Shaw oh, oh, smiles will good, take it. A good question for. Tomorrow in the studio. I'll put that down on the list. <laughs> Tate, did that ball actually hit you? We're going to show a replay right here. The Question umpire did. Is the best way to answer that, the umpire said it did. Yeah, and I ain't about to go back and try to do it again. Hard enough to get on base. Hibbler looks at ball one. Hibbler with a fly out to right field. Yeah, that was a sweet swing that we saw on Friday night. 
the home run in Waco. Shaw is off. And Hitler just puts the bat out there. Shaw's going to have to hustle back the throw from Bolorier in time. And they get Shaw at first base. That's the third double play of the ball game for the Rice Owls. Inning, ending double play for the Rice Owls. So on the second, the first, and now the fourth. What are they saying? Ball don't lie? The Horns up 2-1 as we go to the fifth inning. Tristan Stevens did his job to get out of the fourth, and now he will give way to Matteo Bocchi. 6-4 senior out of Parma, Italy. He's done well lately out of the bullpen, making his 10th appearance for the Longhorns. It's Coach Pierce talking last thing that that's his role. Tristan Stevens is going to come out of the bullpen to end an inning. Now Mateo Boki can start a crisp inning better with runners aren't on base and start clean. And I think you're going to start seeing him do that more with Cam Fields in the sense of bringing Cam in with clean innings, let him start the frame, maybe not be the guy that comes in when there's trouble, and yeah. let him come in, start clean. Yeah, it's been a wild pitch has been a little problem for yeah. Cam as of late, as of this year, but still growing, still learning, still wants that baseball. He's got one in his hand right now. <laughs> I like that. That's always, always, always have the ball. You can always work on your grips in the dugout. I like it. Work on your spin on your breaking ball. Yeah. So Mateo Boki getting his warm up pitches. Last time he pitched in front of Matt Braga, it was the performance of his life. Game three of the Austin Super Regional, trip to Omaha on the line, and Boki went five innings, allowed four hits, and one run to get the win as Texas took down Tennessee Tech five to two to punch the ticket to Omaha. The biggest game of his college career. Yeah, I mean, the question was going into that ball game, who, who's it going to be? Who's, who's the starter? He, he grabbed the ball and went out there and did a great job. Set the, set the tone of the ball game by going five and having Texas leading when he came out of the game. And to me, it seemed like the next chapter for him would be to secure this Tuesday starter role, be the number four guy. What has prevented him from doing that this year? Well, a lot of it, I think. They, they have moved his arm angle down a little bit. He's, he just hasn't been able to find that really good release point to be I always I keep using the word consistent with a lot of these relief pitchers because it, it's been a problem with a lot of them over a two or three inning stretch. They're just not consistent with throwing strikes, and that's been a big problem for Mateo. Austin Todd under it and has it. So if maybe dropping down has affected that a little bit more at this point in time, can you scrap it and go back no. to the original arm slot? I, I think there's, there's more upside to this yes. angle. You get more movement. The, the ball is fastball is flat, a little more up top. And I mean, it was really, I mean, the, take away that Tennessee Tech game, a lot of inconsistency in that. So right now, I think they like the movement they see. He's got the little sweeping brick slider, that one right there. Ooh. Yeah. I, 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 and Mateo would like to play professional ball. I will guarantee you, he's been thinking about playing baseball in Italy when he was. I saw his name come up on a. On a Bulletin that he might be pitching for Italy in the, in the World Baseball Classic. Okay, that would be something for him. So you, you just look at the scenario. Uh, I think I, I think his future is with the arm slot he's got. Yeah. Well, for me, so that I think that's, uh, and I think to help this club, I, I I believe the same thing down the line. That I think this arm slot's going to help him. Oh, two to the leadoff man, Bolorier. See, and said he was almost in danger of being a stock righty. What are they talking about no. when they mentioned that? 89, 91, slider. When his arm slot was where it was. Yeah. Slider, curveball, changeup. This, there's guys that can make careers out of this. You're gonna, you're gonna get rid of the changeup at the next level. You're gonna get rid of everything except that pitch oh. and the fastball. Yeah. Good luck, Aaron Bellorian. Yeah, at the next level, you'll get on a consistent throwing program. 
where you'll you're, you'll be in games every other day, and and you'll start to throw harder because you know I'm, I'm, I might only be out here for an inning or two innings. Right now, they might want him to go four innings, but you get on a consistent program where you're in games and, and your fastball will become a lot firmer. You'll get that release point. That's a good pitch right there, and find a better better spot for that breaking ball. Like I said, there's guys that make careers out of just two pitches. And it is obvious, even from the untrained eye, there is more movement on his pitches oh, yeah. since he's dropped down. Nothing straight. Even that one's down the middle, but it still has just that little bit of movement. And Reynolds makes everything look easy. Three up, three down for Mateo Boki. 2-1, Texas leads. I this is a fantastic rivalry going back to 1915, Texas and Rice, and leave it to a guy that played right here at the University of Texas for really taking that rivalry to the next level. Wayne Graham was that guy, played for Big Falk in 1956 and 1957, 1992, his first year on the job at Rice. Eventually won a national championship with the Owls, and you see some of the recent tournament history. Go back to 2014. That was a classic when Texas isn't going on to reach the College World Series. So there have been some good battles. Six and six head to head in postseason play. That's what it's all about. Right there. A lot of good games. Blair Lewis is the new pitcher. The fourth that we've seen tonight for Rice. How about this one? He takes over for Drake Greenwood, who had more outs. Then he threw strikes. He got three outs and threw two strikes. Any way he can do it. Quality strikes right there. <laughs> Making the most out of them. Good little tidbit, Graham. Brian Graham. Oh, right oh top of that. that okay. Yeah. Good job. Or was that Kurt? Larry Lewis doesn't <laughs> walk anybody. Only two walks in 17 innings of work. Zach Zubia leading off the bottom of the fifth. Texas with the 2-1 lead. Duke Ellis led off for the Longhorns with a triple to left field. Austin Todd then drove him in. Rice came back to tie it up. Lance Ford delivered with an RBI single of the middle to make it 2-1 Longhorns. That was back in the third. It was a slow start for Rice this season. But they have picked it up as of light, winning five of the last seven. However, the two losses in that seven game span, the final two games against Florida International, dropping that series. Both those Florida schools, International and Atlanta, playing good ball. Yeah, Louisiana Tech's good in Conference USA. You see the hesitation there in the delivery from Lewis? Whatever it takes to get the hitter. Off balance, it's rhythm and timing. Well, he, his fastball is 80. Okay, I mean, 80. I'm, his fastball is 80. So you, you have to do something to disrupt the timing of the hitter because you're not going to throw it by. You see that? I think it's been Marcus Stroman that's made that so popular now, especially on social media. Those clips get out of him. Just adjusting his the delivery and some hesitation, some pauses. The dude from Kansas City a couple years ago was it Volquez? Yes, he can. Yeah, he was he was pulling some. Uh, You're quick pitcher too. Yeah. Like not Louis Tion. He, he used to do that back in the day. Well, Tion was, was about as good as anybody. Too. And then you had guys like Jim Cott that would go so quickly, and then all of a sudden put a pause on. <laughs> How would you mess with timing, Zeke? I, I'm pretty vanilla. Yeah. Yeah. I did with with my changeup or curveball, located fastball. Yeah, that wasn't too. And part of that too is sometimes you're if out it there works, trying it works. to make up stuff. <laughs> <laughs> there are there are times when I'm should I try this hesitation thing? <laughs> yes. Yeah. Something and then different. You, you talk yourself out of it. <laughs> I'm gonna try it right here. No, I'm not. You got it? Nope. You take it. Oh. Everybody 
What will Blair Lewis come up with now as Bertelson is down 0 2? Pause, delivery, ball one. And then you had Hadeon Nomo who just did it oh. every time. Who just did a 180 on the mound. Oh, we had a long game one day when Nomo and Tom Candiotti, the knuckleballer, were on. It was long. Back to back pops up, pop ups to center field, and Bertelson is retired, two down. This is a guy that can't go twice through a line. Right. He's going to, he might be out after one inning or two innings, but you see this guy a couple times. It's much out. But we talk about it all the time. So it's not always just velocity. If you locate 80, you can get people out. And the next one at 72, and the next one at 76, and the next one 80, and the next one 71. Yeah. Then sneak 82 by. Yeah. Is Kyle Hendricks probably the most successful pitcher today in the major leagues that does not throw overwhelmingly hard? He's a modern day Maddox. But Max, when he came up, threw yeah, pretty he hard. Could hum it, yeah, but eventually just located everything. Everything looked the same, but Hendricks, yeah, playing for the same team Greg Maddox played. When I broke into the league. There was a left-hander in San Diego when the Cy Young could not throw at 80. Randy Jones. He could not throw 80 miles an hour. It was Cy Young. What was his approach? To just keep you off. Stay balance. under Great. the radar. <laughs> Subsonic. One two to McCann. Hit well to right field. And a couple of steps in front of the track. DeLuke makes the grab. Blair Lewis not throwing gas, but it's three up, three down. Don't matter. The Lone Star. On this Tuesday night, looking good as always here at the state capital of Texas. Longhorns looking pretty solid as well. 2 1 lead, and a low scoring affair against the Rice Owls. It's a big inning for Mateo Boki. He's got the meat of this order who can swing the bat for the Owls, starting with Cruz here with the first hitter. Cruz is 0 for 2, but he has ripped a couple of balls. One about four feet from being out of here. And another one on the line drive right to the left field. Ellis coming in, makes the catch on the tip of the longhorn. Got him out on the end of the bat that time. Pitch out of the zone. Andrew Dunlap. Straps in and steps in. 42 RBIs, 10 home runs, both those top 20 nationally. Keep this ball in the ballpark right here. That's the run right there. You got a 2 0, a hitter's count. Throw that fastball where it starts on the middle of the plate and ran in on his hands. Tony. Second matchup between Texas and Rice this season. Longhorns won the first in Houston. Very beginning of the season as Hitler is there. Makes the throw across the diamond for the second out. As Texas was playing the aggressive shift. The Tim so we'll take this one over what you guys felt in that first game. It had the rain before the start. It was misty. It was in the 40s. Well, the game was 
probably only played because Texas was already there. They were on their way back home from Lafayette. So they were in town already. It had rained most of the day. Yes. But no shot on Sunday with that weather system in Waco that they were getting that game in. It wasn't going to stop raining until today in Waco. Another one for Hibbler. Gobbles it up. The throw is up the line. Bertelson is off the bag. Well, that's what you have to do, though, as a first baseman. It was off the line. Make sure you come off. Keep. Give up one base. Don't give up two. Two is left. Took his Raised time. Up, took his time and just held on to it too long, and there was no way Burleson could stay on the bag. And nice job here. You got to come off. Don't let that ball somewhere. You can see Hibbler upset at himself. That, that's a give me. That's oh, yeah. a giveaway give me. Well, now six now I hope it doesn't, it doesn't hurt you. Yes. So the middle infield responsible for 19 errors. 45 overall. And David Hamilton out for the season. The ruptured Achilles. We'll see some various looks up the middle for Texas when last season can make the case that it was the best middle infield in America. With David Hamilton and Cody Clements. They were hitting homers too. 24 by Cody. David snuck in five. I know Lowell was happy to see that. To Ford. Will let it drop. Close play at first. Oh, that was just in time. Ford to Bertelson. But Edwards was hustling down the line. So Ford back up for that one. That hesitation nearly cost him. Take another look. Whoa. Edwards. And they want to take a look. The Horn's still up two to one as we go to the bottom of the sixth. The Rice House did not go to replay in between innings, but we did. <laughs> and we're going to. Circle the foot on the bag and then we're gonna spotlight the ball. You make the call right there. So that is a reviewable play. Matt Braga chose not to review. But I have to say the telestration work, maybe for the first time in Longhorn Network history, went with an arrow and, and the, the spot shot. A double telly. Yeah. That was impressive. It made me sweat. <laughs> <laughs> got a towel. I got two towels. Top of the lineup for the Longhorns, holding on to that 2-1 lead, and Blair Lewis is back out. Makes it imagine, slowing it down, speeding it up, doing whatever he can to keep Texas off balance. He got three flyouts by Zubia, Bertelson, McCann to send Texas down in order in the fifth. Ellis, the first runner to score for the Longhorns. After his second triple of the year, he was driven in by Austin Todd. Third inning, McCann had a single up the middle. He was driven in by Lance Ford. Three one count. And there is more activity in the Rice bullpen. Rifle to right field. This will get down. Aggressive turn from Ellis, he'll hold up. He's forcing the throw. And that is the second hit of the evening for Duke Ellis. Yeah, worked the count, got a good pitch to handle up. 3-1, second hit of the night. Nice stroke there from Ellis. Hitting better than 300 now over the past 12 games. Ellis has his 10th multi-hit game of the season, tying Reynolds and Todd for the team lead. Ford has been the guy that's been doing the most damage over the past two games, driving in five runs in a span of two. He's going back to his four RBI performance Saturday against Baylor. 
weekend. Texas had an early lead through two winnings on Sunday. That game was canceled because of weather, so no stats carry over. It's like nothing ever happened. Dalton Wood, number eight, is up for the Rice Owls in their bullpen. We got single digits. Number eight, the right hand. All right, so if you are a guy that does not throw hard, you got speed on first, how are you keeping Ellis over at first base? Hold it for a second longer. He goes in there with a knuckleball grip. You see that? Spike Kerman. Hold, hold the ball a, a split second longer. Hold it a split second shorter. Good move. Throw over. They'll just mix up times on everything. Step off. Throw over is let you know that he's there. You don't have to throw over, just step off. Look. But more One of the best is just come set and hold. Yeah. More importantly, yeah, just mix the time you hold the ball to go home. There goes Zealous. Ford slaps it foul. We got a catch. And a drop. No, he dropped it. Hey, it's as good and hold it. Right somebody. On it somebody. Where's the young man? Free souvenir. Oh, uh, here's one. Here comes, he's coming. He's coming behind you. He's got, one in, hey. he's got one in his hand. Get up there. Oh, look at that. That's Wait. perseverance. That's hustle right there. I got another one. I love it. That's closing speed from that young man. Will Ellis go again? No. I mean, that was like Gary Johnson in the open field. That linebacker from Texas just covering ground to make a play. Maybe one day starring in something at the University of Texas. Unusual grip for sure. Oh, leg kick on the end. When he goes in the glove, he looks like he's Trying to grip a knuckle right there. You're enticing me. I kind of want to see the knuckleball now. Maybe grip and throw it. Yeah, he's got the good, the velocity is good for the knuckleball. Yeah, I mean, he's digging in. Could be the knuckle curve as well. It's just two knuckles right there. Cat and mouse with Ellis and Lewis. Ellis nine for nine and stolen bases. And he's gone. Right through the opening. Ellis stumbled a little bit. A little bit of a hesitation around second, but it won't matter as he was off easily into third base. So first and third, no outs. At the top of the lineup, Ellis and Ford have been outstanding tonight. Another job by Ford right here is on. He stays back again. Screwball stays away from him. Tried to turn it over and run it away. to stayed with it. Kept his hands back. Got it in that one. Actually, three, four hole. And Ellis does a nice job of getting around to third. Now, take advantage of this right here. Now, the dangerous Austin Todd came into this game hitting 422 with runners in scoring position. He bumped that up by driving in Ellis in the first inning. Give Texas the one nothing lead. Three out of the five innings for Texas has ended in a double play tonight. Don't want that right here. Todd Homer against Baylor. That was Saturday. First long shot in a 21 game span. Came into this game, fifth in the Big 12 with 30 driven in. 
added 31 in the first. 1-1. One, one. And it's 2-1. Larry Lewis digging in to that ball. I think it's just put in the back of the hitter's mind. Mm -hmm. He has it on a knuckleball or what resembles a knuckle curve since he's been out there. Keep going over there, Blair. And also just could be a field thing, just something he does because it makes him comfortable. That's hit on the line. Double play ball. There's one, two, but Ellis will score to make it a 3 1 lead. So there's another double play. Fourth of the night, but this one does not end the inning like the previous three. And also gets a run home. No credit on the RBI on the double play ball, but Texas will gladly take that piece of insurance right there. Reynolds 0 for 2. He grounded into one of those double plays. Also flew out to left field. And Blair Lewis will try to get out of this with just allowing a single run to Texas. And three up, three down in the fifth. And after back to back singles to lead off this bottom of the sixth. Got a double play ball that resulted in one run, but otherwise killed some of that Texas momentum. But as Texas has done all season long, they find themselves in a close game. More often than not, <laughs> I don't know what it is, but Blair Lewis, I love it. Keep on doing your thing, young man. <laughs> Fun to watch there. That is old school. Throwback. And a kickback on the delivery from Blair Lewis. Oh. What are back. we doing here? <laughs> and back up. That'll throw your timing off right there. With his 19... Texas with the 3-1 lead over Rice, Ellis, Ford, and Todd. They have done the damage, going five for eight. Two RBIs to their credit. Todd had that double play ball that scored the third run of the game. Mateo Boki brought stability for Texas out of the bullpen. Tristan Stevens was also good. Ty Madden, pretty solid in getting the start. As Lance Ford drove in a run back in the third to give Texas the lead. Mateo Boki is going to try to keep it that way as we go to the top of the seventh. I'm Lord Lindo here with Keith Moreland and Greg Swindell. Well, just enough, just enough movement, just enough cut on that ball. Getting a lot of swing and misses. Like that. That one had a little more depth to it, a little bend. See, when, when you start to get the feel for the fastball, you can also get a feel for that off speed, too. Just a little slight wrist movement on top and below it just to take some speed off of it or add some more velocity. DeLuke has gone down twice on strikeouts tonight. Make that three times. As Mateo Boki registers his second punch out of the evening. And on the two strikeouts he's had, the swings have not been close, quite honestly. Here's Brant Frazier. Also struck out. That was against Tristan Stevens, who came in in the fourth. Did After a dynamite Rice threatened. Job, yeah. yeah, they had two runners on with one out. Stevens was able to get DeLuke and Frazier back to back to get out of the inning. This game stays 3 1 in. Somebody's going to get a save. But the save was back in that fourth inning that when Tristan Stevens came in and got two strikeouts with runners on second and third. The next level, he gets a hold. Look at a hold. Yeah. 
up the middle. Ford is there. And makes the play, two down. And Antonio Cruz steps up, 0 for 2, fly out to right, and a strikeout. Grandson of the great Jose Cruz, son of Jose Cruz Jr. Third overall pick once his playing days were done at Rice. And a solid major league career. Now he gets to watch two of his boys, Trey and Antonio, do the thing for his alma mater. Swing and a miss. Father Jose Cruz. Junior, 12-year Major League veteran. Grandpa, Jose Cruz Sr., 19 years in the big leagues. And this, honestly, guys, it makes me feel a little old because grew up in the Astrodome watching Jose Cruz Sr. Then remember Jose Cruz Jr. coming out of Rice. Now to watch the grandsons of Jose Cruz Sr., that's, that's a little different for me, Keith. Well, I played against the grandpa, so, so let's just start there. Bulp has been really good, Greg. That two outs, nobody on right there, didn't hit about it. Yeah. They've, retired. They've faced 13 hitters, haven't given up a hit. The two that have reached a hit by pitch in the air. So you hit the number nine batter. And that's going to bring up Bolorier. Who's got a single to his credit. Also scored off the bat of Como, who's on deck. Inside, ball two. And Bulky looking to get one across here. A quality strike, though. It's David Pierce. Talked about that on game plan last week. These guys, one thing to get strikes, you need quality strikes, something that does not leave the yard. Big difference between the two, Zeke. Yeah. yeah, quality strikes are good located, not behind in counts. You can get away with pitches that are not quality strikes when you pitch ahead in the count. Yeah. You don't get away with Pitches that are not quality strikes when you're behind in the kick. You get ahead, you put hitters on the defense. Yes. They're gonna. They're, they're, I've always, I've always thought you, you get ahead by throwing strikes. You get hitters out by throwing balls. They're gonna get themselves out for the most part. If you're ahead of them, right. yes. Then you can pitch off of the barrel. Yeah. Two balls, two strikes to Aaron Bolorier, leadoff hitter for Rice. And it's a full count. So Bolorier will be in motion here. Should be behind him. Pokey trying to put him down. Runner is off, and he does. Bolorier goes down looking. Bokey hits Cruz, but leaves him at first. 3-1, Texas stretching it out. Attention, pitching ninja. We need a breakdown of Blair Lewis's game. Blair Lewis, unconventional, unorthodox, but it was pretty effective against the Texas Bats. He gets a, I can tell a, you, I've, I've watched a lot of baseball. I've never seen that one right there. I've not seen the that. backward. Never Blake seen King? back, up, back. It's like a, a, a ride at the carnival right there. Wow. Blair Lewis, my new favorite pitcher in college baseball. Yeah, pitched well. Two innings, two hits. He'll give way to Dalton Wood. He'll probably put a little more zip on it. Yeah, huh? A little different. 6'5, 240 right there. Numbers are up, but got a good fastball. You get it up there around 94 miles an hour. Slider to go with it. And a changeup. Yeah, a lot, a lot different than Mr. Lewis. Tate Shaw, a.k.a. Tater, will lead off for Texas here in the bottom of the seventh. Shaw 
may have been hit by a pitch his last time out. He got credit for the hit by a pitch. But if you tune in tomorrow, game plan with David Pierce, we will we, ask we have an answer. Will he? Did he actually get hit? Was contact made with the left foot? And and since there was no review, I mean, he, he can be honest. He, he got to first base. What else do you want me to ask Tate tomorrow? I need some ideas. How many gloves does he bring to the ballpark? The Jake McKenzie question. We'll ask him about that base knock to right field. So Tate has been on three times, a single to right. He was hit by a pitch, and he had that ball through the legs of Edwards at second base. How about his walk off? Okay. Did he did he think he hit a homer on that one? Because rumor has it that he thought he got it. So our producer Drew Urban wants to know is he if he's ever practiced robbing home run balls over the left field fence like that one I think it was against Kansas State a couple years ago where he took it right in the ribs and is an excellent question. Good job Drew. Drew is leaving us by the way our esteemed producer to go work on video games not just video games but MLB the show it is a high school sport now video games <laughs> esports so next Tuesday will be Drew Urban's final game producing baseball and Longhorn Network and we'll move to San Diego to begin work on MLB the show which the Galindo family is helping the cause downloaded MLB the show 19 on opening day. I'll say it's for my son but I play. Now you're gonna see some different graphics. I expect to take over for Matt Vaskurgeon as the voice of that video game. Or at least have some sort of cameo. A bat a boy cameo. modeled after now me. He's talking about something. cameos. <laughs> Word up. <laughs> Did you say word up? Cameo. Rice has struggled to get their leadoff hitter on, but Texas is not in this ball game. Five out of seven innings, Texas has had their leadoff. Batter reached reach base. Found ways to score in the first, third, and the sixth. Tate and his brother Colin, hard nosed players of the University of Texas. Both have been a pleasure to watch. Shaw Deeks, but gets caught up in the throwdown in plenty of time from Frazier. This is outstanding. And Shaw was doing his job. You anticipate that ball in the dirt's going to get away where you can get into scoring position. And then what's this pick? That's just incredible. And in the presence of mind to force Shaw to go one direction or another and get an out. Outstanding. Right there. That's the, that's the best part, though. He forced Tate to make a decision before he got rid of the baseball. Both guys in the right right there. Hanging change up, swings right through it. Does Mason. I mean, you want your guys to be a little more aggressive. You see ball and dirt, you react, and just a great scoop back there. So quickly, two outs. And Zubia steps in. And you preach it all the time, Keith. You gotta add. Oh, you do. Getting into the late stages of this game. Texas has had a knack for winning close games, but they don't want to be in close games that they don't have to be. All it takes is a bloop and a blast, and we got a tie ball game. Rice coming up, got two hole hitter coming up in the eighth to lead it off. Yeah. Como has had a solid night. Sometimes the eight. Trey Cruz has hit a couple on the screws with nothing to show for it.
Upstairs to make it two balls and one strike to Zubia. It's a freshman All-American last season. Driving in 45 with 11 home runs. And it's 2-2. That throws and Wood. He's got a good fastball, but he has pitched a little backwards. His changeups been his most effective pitch since coming into the game. He's left it up. Wood put his head down and he was walking back to the dugout. But that was strike three, third out. He'll do it again with a full count. Longest at bat of the night for the Longhorns as the seventh pitch is on its way from Dalton Wood to Zach Zubia. Full count, two outs. And that's a two out walk. Texas has been one of the best teams in America this season in terms of drawing walks this year. First one for Longhorn batters tonight. I'm surprised we're not seeing a pinch runner here with two outs for Zubia. We'll see a visit to the mound. Calling everybody in. Well, you look ahead, guys, if we, as we sit here and start thinking about this homestand. Game tonight, uh, and then you've got Kansas State, who's quite frankly been struggling yeah. in a lot of different ways. So you got to take care of business if you're Texas over the course of the weekend. And then next week you have Lamar, and then you got some tough games on the road. Obviously, have to travel to Stillwater, and then Texas State, who's playing very well tonight at over at AM. Stillwater, that'd be a Thursday, Friday, Saturday before Easter. Yes, it is. So at Texas State, last we looked, was up on AM. In College Station. So the situation two down, Zuby on first base. Texas will not pinch run for him. And Sam Bertelson is your batter. Bertelson lined into a double play over to first base in the second inning. It's also flown out to center field. Getting the start at first base tonight with Tate Shaw on left, Kennedy on the bench. And first pitch strike issued from Wood. Outside to make it even at one. See what Rossell's have got in this young man. He's got a decent arm. Edward change. Was playing a deep second base and he's able to get Bertelson over at first. So to the eighth we go. Como, Cruz, Dunlap coming up for Rice. Is that your office? No, no, no. It's our office building. Oh, okay. But again, I've tried to tell you I no longer have a window. Big league. Big leaguer. But that is a nice view, is it not? It is. You know, the funny thing is, Ricky Williams actually has a desk in our office. He's never there, but he has a desk. Well, there you go. It's, it's Ricky's office then. Could be. So we'll just start saying that's Ricky Williams' desk. That's, okay. Ricky, that's, that's Ricky's desk. Brandon Ivey out of the bullpen. Taking over for Mateo Boki, who was solid out of the pen. 
Well, the bullpen's been really good tonight. Three and two-thirds innings, no hits, no runs, nothing. Five strikeouts. It's going to go up against the most dangerous bats in this Rice lineup, Como, Cruz, and Dunlap. Como with the only hit out of that trio, and it was a blooper to right field. It fell in between Ford, Bertelson, and Todd, and scored a run. Hitting 325 on the season. Well struck center field. Ellis got it. One down. Gonna flip Cruz around now to a right-handed hitter. That's the other thing. Being a switch hitter, seeing hit from the right side. So Boki does it again against Matt Braga. Going three innings, nothing. And that no walk. Uh, 38 pitches in those three innings. Efficient as well. So here is Trey Cruz to Hibbler. Cruz hustling down the line. Well, Hibbler plenty of time to make the throw. It's two down. You know, originally the, the Rice Owls, they, they took that owl from their seal. Yes. Their seal of the school. Here we go. There's an owl on it. So that's no, okay. kind of how they derived they were going to be the Rice Owls. Now we're going to have a pitching change. Do we need to hold off, Drew, mascot trivia? Or are we staying here? Okay. Yeah. So we're staying here, so please continue. All right, gotta go with this. And so originally they had a big canvas, a big canvas owl, but in 1917. Well, what do you mean a canvas owl? Yeah, well, I'm not I mean, sure. Like, like not a real mascot owl or a real horn beak owl. There you go. Oh, it was someone in a costume. No, just a canvas owl. What, what do you mean a canvas owl? Like it was, it was on, on canvas. A canvas? Yes, just oh. like a symbol. And they just carried it to different athletic events? Right, okay. but in 1917, no 1917, the Texas A&M stole it. Well, supposedly stole it. Guilty. And they sent a detective up there and eventually they received a letter. The detective received a letter and that letter said, Sammy is fairly well and would like to see his parents at seven o'clock, which gave the mascot its first name. Sammy the Owl. Sammy the Owl. It was, it was a decoded. I, I don't, I'm not a detective, so I don't know how to really decode. But there was a real detective involved? Well, yeah. They sent someone up there. They you know, have they ever had a real owl mascot? They've, they had. They did have a real owl for a while, and it would occasionally fly into the stadium, but sometimes it wouldn't. So <laughs> what else do? <laughs> yeah. But there's just... It, what? I mean, this is fascinating. Well, this is fascinating. It, there's really just a few things that have happened in the history. I mean, it's not... It's just an owl. I mean, what do you mean just an owl? Well, an, an owl. I mean, what? How bad can an owl be? I mean, can oh, wow. they can hunt all sorts of stuff, right. different varmints. Right. But not not this owl. Rabbits. Yeah. So eventually squirrels, they, they just. Mice. Went, I actually had one when I was younger. You had a pet owl. A little plastic owl. Because that we'd does go not to, count. We'd go to a lot of rice owl games. Okay. Football games. I had a rice owl. Okay. Ooh. Plastic owl. You put an owl out to keep the birds from landing. Yeah, right. On, you know, yeah. Right. But just a few things in history is the head of Sammy's owl was actually stolen right here in Austin in 1991. Oh. And I suppose they got it back. Did they send a detective for that? No detective. They they got the owl head back. See, to me, it's just it's not right for Texas and Texas A&M to be picking on the kids of Rice. But one one that made me laugh a little bit, kind of giggle. Was Sammy the Owl got ejected at a basketball game for yeah. bumping the ref in 2009? So ejected. So Sammy's a little mischievous, but it's now it's voted on by the student body. Who, who wears, gets to be inside the, the costume? The owl outfit. Yes. Meanwhile, Donnie Diaz out of the bullpen. Is it out of the mob? You know, I learned Marching something new the man? other day. Right, I went up. I was in College Station for the College Station Regional and the Women's Basketball Tournament, and Rice was there too. So I went up to the band, and I was like, all right, if the marching band is the mob, what are you guys? And he said, the bob, because ah. they're the basketball owl band. That was unbelievable. The Frost Bank Tower, supposedly, was created, architect, designed by Rice alum.
made to look like a rice owl staring down at the University of Texas. There you have it. Some rice trickery. We're back in Austin where Garrett Gell enters for Rice. Six pitcher used by Matt Braga here tonight. 6'1 junior from Cypress, Texas, making his 12th appearance on the year. 5'7 ERA, 25 strikeouts, 10 walks. And he will face Michael McCann, the number nine hitter, before Texas turns it over to the top of the lineup. Ellis Ford and Todd who have been the most productive bats for Texas tonight. Longhorns have lost three straight Tuesday games. Well, five and four in, in week, midweek games this season. And Coach Pierce has talked to us since he's been here about winning, you know, 90% of those midweek games. And after tonight, you've got uh, six of them left, or five of them left after tonight. Those losses to Arkansas. As McCann takes it to the gap. It hangs up, though, for Belorier. Arkansas was a two-game series. They lost Tuesday, came back to win Wednesday. Lost to Texas A&M here last week and to Incarnate Word in San Antonio before that. Top of the lineup, Duke Gellis, a triple to left, a single to right. Texas with eight hits tonight. Five of them from the top three hitters. Ellis and Ford with two apiece. Todd with one. 0-2 from Garrett Gale. Breaking ball, down looking is Duke Ellis. That was up. You give Ellen up as, as a hitter, but has some late, sharp bite. Comes right over the top of the zone right here. Bam. It's at the belt when yeah. it crosses the plate. Here's Lance Ford, two for three. It's such an advantage to the pitcher, in my opinion, when you don't have to go through the lineup a couple of times. I mean, if you're coming in and you're seeing, as a hitter, and you're seeing four different pitchers and four different at-bats, it makes it really difficult sometimes. That's the dynamic of... Tuesdays, yes, in major college baseball, it almost feels like such an outlier from the way the rest of these games are played Friday, Saturday, Sunday. They essentially follow a script. You know who you're rolling out, you're trying to get your starters to go as late as possible. And then Tuesday, it almost feels like a different game, a different style and brand of baseball. That's what you want, not wanting though. You'd, you'd like, like to have a Tuesday, like guy, have that a Tuesday going. guy that can go six or seven innings. Just most programs don't have that luxury. You go back to, to last year, Nick Kennedy. I mean, all of a sudden you found it, you had a guy on Tuesday that was going. Yeah. And getting it done. Ford on the ground and is retired. So as Texas goes to the ninth, they are hoping a two-run lead is good enough to hold off six, seven, and eight in the Rice lineup. The Waxes Baseball on Longhorn Network is brought to you by Toyota. Say big at Toyota's Ready, Set, Go sales event. Visit buyatoyota.com. Ninth inning in Austin. Closing time for Donnie Diaz as his Longhorns holding on to a two-run lead as it's a 3-1 Texas lead into the ninth. Diaz entered in the eighth, faced two batters, allowed a single to Andrew Dunlap. And they got a fly ball off the bat of Bradley Knighting. He's facing Ked Edwards. And Edwards laces it to left field, but there is the Tater. Tate Shaw. 
feeling at home in his native left field. He got a good jump on that ball. Well hit fairly well down that line. Got a good jump. The all important first out of the ninth. Yeah, no doubt. We're Especially with a two run lead. Pinch hitter here for Rice. As Kevin Brewer will hit in place of Rodrigo DeLuke, who's gone down strikeouts three times tonight. So Brewer will try to change the mojo here with one down in the top of the ninth. First pitch strike from Diaz. That is so important when you're trying to protect a two run lead with two outs to get. Is that first pitch? First pitch strike. Two for two this inning. Could have been. Big swing and a miss from Brewer. Diaz is a guy that impressed in Waco. He's, he's done a good job. He's been able to mix. He's a four pitch guy that can mix. And when he's throwing strikes, he, he, he comes from so many different speeds and spins that he keeps you off balance as a hitter. We were late on that. And it's one, two. Early in the year, he really struggled with command. Well, and obviously, coming off Tommy John, you would expect some of that. Two from Diaz. That's a slow one to Hibbler. And Texas one out away from the Tuesday night win. And taking two on the season against the Rice Owls. We talked about Rice being beat up. They didn't bring a lot of people, a lot of everyday players with them. They only had 11 on the trip. So nine of them have played so far. <laughs> Brent Frazier will try to keep the Owls alive. First pitch strike from Donnie Diaz. Five of five first pitch strikes is coming into the game. Ten of twelve pitches. Filling it up. I wouldn't change anything. I go right back to the deuce. Just didn't get it close enough. One two from Diaz. And Frazier gets a piece of it. It's two balls, two strikes. Left side of the infield thought it was strike three. Yeah. They were heading to the showers. They're going to give high fives. Two, two. So full count. Do not want to put Frazier on and bring up Antonio Cruz with the potential to tie the game. That is a scenario Donnie Diaz finds himself in the middle of. Frazier draws the walk. He was down 0-2. Greg, that, that's, yeah, the 0-2 part. Is, yeah. He tried, tried the 0-2 curveball and missed, and then he just tried to be too fine. Yeah. Well, you got a guy that he, he could connect here. We're tied. Big swing, Trying to big connect. miss. Uh, I don't think he's going to get cheated, is he? Cole Quintanilla is getting hot. Cam Field just playing a little toss. Yeah. 
Got a piece of that, and once again, it's Diaz ahead 0-2. Can he finish here? Was not able to seal the deal against Brant Frazier. We'll try to send Texas to the win here against Antonio Cruz. Cruz brothers are 0 for 6 tonight. Texas and Donnie Diaz would like them to be 0 for 7. Door slammed. Donnie Diaz doing the work. And David Pierce picks up his 300th career win as a head coach. Fitting he does it against a program he knows so well, the Rice Owls. Program that he helped take to Omaha, helped win a College World Series title with. And Pierce gets the better of Matt Braga once again. Not near the stakes as their last meeting in the Super Regionals last season. But Texas will take it as they snap a three-game losing streak in Tuesday games. Yeah, I think that's important. Now, you know, midweek games, I'm going to conclude the ones you play on Wednesday. Now they're six and four with five left. You would love to think that they could maybe get those other five, and all of a sudden at the end of the year, you're 11 and four on uh, midweek games with some of the people they have had to play in the midweek. Brutal. Yeah. Would not be not would not be a bad <laughs> no. record. And for Texas tonight, didn't. Just enough offensively. They hit ball hard and, and double plays that ended innings early in the ball game. Could have scored more runs if those balls get through, but bullpen tonight was exceptional. They, they, they threw well, gave up one hit when they came in the ball game. And the game for me, game saver for me was Tristan Stevens coming in the game with runners on second and third, yeah, and striking it, out. The just next like a hitter. save right there. Hey, and, and Ty Madden, what he went through, taking that shot. Off his glove, yeah, glove he popped up. He, he was in trouble, but he wanted to stay in the game and pitch solid. We talk about this team being gritty. I mean, right there, yeah. It kind of, it kind of made him mad at that point. Yeah, and he threw the ball better. And David Pierce saw something, but after him, five and two thirds from the bullpen, one hit, one walk, seven strikeouts. So Mateo Boki gets his first win of the year. Diaz his first save, and you're listening to the Eyes of Texans. Texas takes down Rice 3-1. We'll wrap it up after the break. Bo Galindo here with Keith Borland and Greg Swindell. Texas hosting Rice. And Duke Ellis putting a charge into this ball for his second triple of the year to start it off. With well, that was a good start of the ball game and open up. Duke's happy about it. Uh, later in the inning, Austin Todd singles to center, and Texas jumps out to a 1-0 lead. Yeah, the top three, Ellis, Ford, and Todd, did so much, but we saw this multiple times with Texas grounding, lining in a double place to end innings. Yeah, good defense to end innings by the Rice House tonight. Four on the night. And we'll see it again from Bertelson. Another good play right there. Just a ball hit hard right at it. Third inning. Michael McCann. Singles up the middle. So at this point, Texas is trying to add Lance Ford, drives in McCann, and it's 2-1. Well, you see Lance Ford starting to really get hot now. He's had five RBIs in his last four ball games. Fourth inning, Tristan Stevens. This is a big part of the ball game. A turning point in the ball game. Ty Madden leaves. Tristan Stevens will come in with runners on second and third and get two straight strikeouts to end the threat. Cool and collected. So after Tristan Stevens, it was time for Mateo Boki, who was solid. Efficient tonight. Three innings through 38 pitches. Had the slider working. Rice hitters could not see it. Gets a favorable call right there, but a great job by the bullpen and Mateo Boki tonight. So Boki picks up the win. Donnie Diaz picks up the save, his first save at the University of Texas. David Pierce with career win number 300. So 3-1, Texas gets that win, an important win on a Tuesday night against a quality team in Rice, but now spinning it forward. You got a struggle in Kansas State coming to town Friday, Saturday, Sunday, and this is one of those big picture series where Texas 
They got to take the series, but a sweep would be awfully nice. Well, you, you can't take for granted anything in, in this conference. There's no doubt about it. Because this is going to be a team's coming is going to be loose. I mean, Kansas State, what do they got to play for? They're going to come in, be loose, ready to go. Texas has got to take care of business. Could have weather over the weekend as well. Yeah, tech, Kansas State struggling on the mound. Xavier, Xavier came in a couple weeks Xavier. ago the same way. Xavier, Xavier. came in a Don't couple the weeks X. the same way. But you can't take that for granted. Like Zonk said, you're playing really good baseball. This this game right here will help you get a midweek win. So continue to play that good baseball and take it, take it advantage of the weekend and with every game he plays Lance Ford starts to open more and more eyes he's gotten better and better he's comfortable he feels like he deserves to be here now it's his job and you can just see when you relax Greg said it earlier when you relax you're a much better player than you are when you say "Ooh, looking over your shoulder see somebody's gonna take your job five runs now driven in by the freshman Lance Ford over the past two games alone Texas struck first Duke Ellis started it off with that triple he was driven in to get Texas the early lead. Pitching was fantastic out of the bullpen. David Pierce picks up a milestone, and that person dancing, I have no explanation for that. I can tell you this, Texas won 3-1.